Have you ever looked into the sky and imagined touching the stars to dance in the never-ending canvas that is our cosmos? Well, a little girl was hooked into this dream for a rather unusual reason. You see, from a really young age, she and her brother would play hide-and-seek in the park under the starry sky. Being the brother he is, no crook or cranny was challenging to him. She would hide in different spots every single time, only to be found as quickly as she tried to evade him. One night while playing, she looked into the stars that were glittering the sky above. What if I could hide amongst them, she wondered. Or better still, watch my brother's movements from up there and slip away before he finds me. There was an infinite number of possibilities waiting for her to explore if only she could enter that fascinating realm. But of course, she couldn't. And so she waited and waited for a chance until finally it came in the form of a theme park. The sheer vastness of the landscape was nothing like she'd ever seen, and enclosed within it was a seemingly larger indoor roller coaster. As she walked into the ride, a cloud of eternal darkness spilled into her view. Somehow, her family managed to maneuver into the roller coaster, but her heart was racing. What exactly did this ride entail? And then she saw dots of light illuminated the landscape, glistening with an astral intensity. As they surged forward with the momentum, her vision tunneled, caked over with patches of stars. Her hope, her dream was set ablaze as she grazed, her hands grazed over them. She had reached the stars at last. But like every fairy tale, a curtain was thrown over this magical canvas once again as the riot came to a halt. Bewildered, she looked up to the stars that were far away now. Were they playing a game of hide and seek too? letting her touch them for a second only to lose them the next? At that instant, she decided, a silent promise she made to herself that she'd feel the stars again, unravel their mysteries, and dance amongst them once more. I am that little girl. I am Helen Maria Biju, a student of the Cambridge High School, and I am an aspiring astrophysicist. The stars are still there, waiting to be explored, waiting to be touched by those who dare to dream. I've always been passionate about the STEM subject. There's a rhythm to it that I enjoy, rules that are set to guide you, but never really to hinder you. There's always this opportunity to challenge the very fabric of what's known and escapade into the road not taken, into something anew. However, students in general think of the STEM subject as a pretty daunting area. The few who have the resources don't have the passion for STEM, while others who do have the passion for the most part don't have the resources. Only a slender number of students are able to break free from the cycle and thrive. So how can we enhance the effectiveness of STEM subjects in classrooms? The current challenge lies in the fact that students often find themselves confined to mere memorization, lacking opportunities to apply the acquired skills in real world context. This memorization centric approach dampens their enthusiasm for the STEM field as they envision a future devoid of creativity. A potential solution to this lies in redefining our pedagogical approach. And that's where project-based learning and inquiry-based learning come into play. These student-centered methods encourage inquiry, exploration, and discovery. By allowing students to learn through hands-on learning experiences rather than passive memorization, Curiosity, creativity, and critical thinking can be promoted. One effective strategy involves presenting students with real-world problems or challenges. This prompts them to investigate, hypothesize, test, and articulate their findings, facilitating a deeper understanding of the STEM subjects. Research shows that students who use this approach demonstrate a 56% increase in material retention, with 82% of the students clearly enjoying these sessions and the learning process. Additionally, we can introduce a program where students can apply the knowledge they've gained in real-world context to address pressing global issues, thereby fostering innovation. Such initiatives could be organized by STEM societies in school as a termly event where students are able to showcase their innovations, but also engage with others' ideas. In line with this vision of reimagining STEM education, 
I began teaching students from my community school nearby my hometown different concepts, including STEM related ones. The first time I started taking those sessions, I was stunned by how adeptly they could grasp knowledge, but more so in their fascination to learn. This wasn't just me teaching them though. Throughout the lessons, I would be walking away with newfound knowledge or understanding of the same ideas I thought I knew so well. What's interesting is that none of these students had parents who could afford to get them to better schools, buy them new uniforms every year, get them laptops or computers, or even fund for any of their educational trips, no. But what these students are able to capitalize with the limited resource they have just makes you wonder the great heights they could achieve if only they did. And let's not confine this narrative to one school in one corner of the world, no. This is a global tale resonating with countless students facing similar circumstances. I want you all to think about the hard work and effort that we put in to achieve our dreams. Now imagine that struggle, but this time it's compounded by a lack of resource and expertise we often take for granted. It's like playing a game of snake and ladders, except they get bitten by snakes even before the game begins. I want to change that story. And that's why I created Embrace Minds, a community that believes education is not a privilege granted to a few, but a right. This is a student-led platform that is dedicated to facilitating the open exchange of ideas, fostering discussion and refining concepts collaboratively. With our wonderful education, we have conducted online workshops with multiple tribal schools and others to date, teaching students important concepts, including those centered around STEM. Through Embrace Minds, we are shaping the future by making a stand, a stand that marks education as a shared resource and not a prerogative of a few, a stand that ensures that success is based on equal opportunity, a stand that creates a future where knowledge knows no boundaries. Let platforms like STEMX, Embrace Minds and others be a catalyst to entice students from across the region and beyond to the world of STEM. Thank you. Thank you, Helen. Very Thank you. Actually, yeah. we'll, we'll have a better closure uh, yeah. uh, session for today. Yeah. We'll be better. Yeah. Uh, yeah, won't be better. So it's uh, it's impressive Absolutely. and amazing. Yeah, yeah you have you have a bright future, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Helen that means done the job of uh, uh, Nilima. Yeah. Uh, 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 very well. <laughs> very well presented. Uh, indeed, yeah. it was really nice listening to you. Yeah, continue your great job and uh, uh, your uh, influence on your community and getting the getting wider. Also, that's why we are here and also we are willing to support more so you can reach out at any time. Thank you so much, definitely. Uh, okay, Helen, so again, congratulations. I want to congratulate you as well for your storytelling uh, skills and your communication skills. So that was amazing. You presented it in a very engaging way. Uh, I am a passionate about STEM education and all what you covered uh, uh, has a lot of STEM, let's say. So um, it's a beautiful uh, conclusion for all these uh, uh, presentations. Uh, yet I just want to ask you, uh, where are you now? Uh, are you uh, delivering sessions for students, uh, who's helping you, uh, where are you delivering the sessions, if you have like any link, uh, uh, what is your plan to, to do marketing for, for, this, uh, for this website or for this link, and then on, on the top of uh, all of this, uh, my question is, what is your plan uh, for the future? So um, are you willing to open a center or you will just be online? And again, we are here to help and please uh, feel free to, to contact me at any time as well. I would love to help. That's amazing. Um, my hometown is actually from India, Kerala. So I started doing these community and tribal schools 
from my hometown, they called me in to do one session and that quickly expanded to multiple sessions and a couple of other schools reached out as well. So that's how it started. Uh, currently, I'm doing schools in India. So specifically for now, it's like uh, South India. That's where I'm focused into. But I do want to branch out to other schools because I feel like we, because of the technology that we have, because of the online resources that we have, we don't have to go to their institution and teach them. We can unite different students from different areas, different parts of the world to come together and share their knowledge and understanding. Because uh, as I said, it's not just about me teaching them. Most of the time, I'm also learning many of the skills that I never knew I had. So um, that's how it actually started in terms of my plan for the future. Again, I do want to spread out or whenever I go to India, I take my time to go to the schools in person so that I can meet up with the kids actually and try to communicate with them. I'm also planning to expand this in terms of marketing. But of course, my ultimate aim is to get students, uh, students who are interested in teaching, ask them to volunteer and help around because this is in the end, the ultimate goal of this is to end educational inequality that we're all currently existing in our world, especially with this uh, sustainable development goal. I think the fourth one is quality education. So in regards to that, I do want to support our world in breaking educational inequality. So the, at the end of the day, it's to reach out to as many students as we can, as many uh, participants as we can, and get them interested to STEM and other subjects. Perfect. So you as a student, from where are you getting all this knowledge, like to be able to deliver all this information? Are you attending sessions in STEM education? Are you attending the conferences? So can you just uh, tell me, like, from where are you getting all this knowledge or you just go and read about it, like watch videos, uh, ask like experts in the field? Um, for now, it's mainly asking experts from the field because I do have, I've been fortunate to have a network of people people who are really interested into various STEM subjects. So anything the students want to learn about, I usually connect them with people who do have that skill so that they're able to pass it on to the students because I feel like I have a limit to certain topics that I'm fascinated about. I can deliver it well, but for other topics where maybe another expertise would do, I would connect them otherwise. Um, no, I have not been attending conferences. For the most part, it's been connecting with students, connecting with passionate individuals, hopefully like STEMX, if I could get people interested to share their ideas as well, especially related to STEM, uh, that would be great. I think, okay. uh, I, I think you should be attending conferences and you should be giving speeches because, you know, I first got passionate about STEM education by a gentleman called Ken Robinson, who talked about changing the paradigms in school and how schools were killing creativity. Um, mm. And I've used him as a basis of all my work for the last decade um 15 years and and now you've come along and you've added to my list you know you great gave a brilliant presentation um very passionate uh very clear very concise and uh you know uh, the same as my other two judges you know however we can help let us know because you've got a, a good voice to share um to both both teachers and to students one question for you um in your opinion what's the what's the top thing if you could highlight one thing that is a barrier to success with STEM in, in, in schools. I think the barrier to STEM in schools is fascination because for the most part, students are going to mere memorization. They're looking at their tests, they're looking at grades. They feel like that is what defines their future and it's not really about the passion. So they're losing passion along the years that they've been studying in school. And I think um, you highlighted it really well in terms of schools killing creativity, because if we focus on a certain approach that is based on grades alone, then we won't have that interest in STEM. And I think uh, Mr. Bobby had mentioned about how um, bio students, there are less people in the bio sector. And I feel like the main reason for that is that many people are don't feel inspired by the bio subject anymore because of the extensive work that's put into it, extensive emphasis on the grades. So if we could change that approach through inquiry-based and project-based learning, then we can really elevate the extent and success of STEM. Brilliant. Great answer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Helen. Thank you so much. That was excellent.